Hi everyone and welcome back to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Dr. Sid Cowley. I have been waiting a long time to be able to say that. And I am a Fusion Solutions Engineer at the machine learning company and FIA member DigiLab. Today is Wednesday the 26th of June and I'm here to give you your Fusion News update. Stories today include 1. Hybrid design could make nuclear fusion reactors more efficient. 2. Fusion sparks an energy revolution. 3. A plasma escape plan solved a monumental fusion roadblock. And 4. CNL launches new initiatives to fast-track fusion energy deployment. And of course, I'll have some bonus stories for the end. 1. Hybrid design could make nuclear fusion reactors more efficient. Our first story today comes from New Scientist and covers quite a bold piece of research that reimagines what a magnetic fusion device looks like. Now typically, magnetic fusion is dominated by two broad approaches, the tokamak and the stellarator. Now both aim to confine a donut-shaped fusion plasma using twisted magnetic fields. And that twistiness is important, or otherwise known as rotational transform. It's key to achieving good confinement. Now, the tokamak concept generates these twisted magnetic fields using a combination of two sets of magnetic field coils. One set generates a constant toroidal field, and the other, known as the central solenoid, creates a current in the plasma itself. Now, stellarators, on the other hand, use one set of twisted magnetic field coils. The benefit of a stellarator is that you don't need to induce a plasma current. Now, that's great because plasma currents can lead to instabilities and make plasmas very difficult to control. Stellarators also allow steady state generation because they don't need that central solenoid. So to sum up, stellarators are difficult to build, but easy to operate. For tokamaks, it's the other way around. Now, this article from New Scientist covers work published in Physical Review that proposes a hybrid of the tokamak and the stellarator. Specifically, the idea is to take those simpler tokamak coils and add several small, twisted, stellarator-like coils to the center of the machine. This means you don't need a central solenoid or plasma current, so you get the best of both worlds. You get a machine where most of the magnets are pretty easy to build, like a tokamak, but the plasma is easy to control, like a stellarator. Though this is a really interesting concept, I must say for now, it's just that, a concept. A lot of validation needs to be done before this hybrid tokamak stellarator can be turned into a real device. Nevertheless, it's a really cool idea, and daring ideas like these can sometimes lead to the most powerful breakthroughs. 2. Fusion Sparks an Energy Revolution Our second story today comes from Wired and is written by Moritz van der Linden, CEO of FIA member Marvel Fusion. The article discusses an important transition that Fusion is undergoing from laboratory experiments to commercialization. Specifically, the article highlights the National Ignition Facility, which, if you've been following our channel, you'll remember it made headlines in 2022 by achieving an ignited net gain fusion plasma for the first time in history. Though this was certainly groundbreaking, the machine is not a commercial fusion device, and it was never designed to be. In fact, the National Ignition Facility can fire around twice per day, not continuously as a power plant will need to in the future. But the article highlights that fusion is now being geared more towards demonstrators and less to these fundamental scientific devices like the National Ignition Facility. And these demonstrators look a lot more similar to the fusion power plants of the future. And this eye on commercialization is backed by fusion strategies, which have recently been developed by the US, the UK, Japan, and Germany. It's also being supported more and more financially, with 5 billion US dollars of private capital flowing into fusion companies over the last two years. Finally, the article emphasizes the transition to commercial demonstration is driven by a growing private fusion industry. It highlights FIA members Commonwealth Fusion Systems, Helion Energy, and General Fusion, who are all building these sort of large demonstrator-like fusion facilities today. Three, Plasma Escape Plan solved a monumental fusion roadblock. Our third story is from Popular Mechanics and covers a recent collaborative project between Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory, Oak Ridge National Laboratory, and the EDER organization. 
The work looks at how the magnetic structure of a tokamak plasma is naturally modified in something called a homoclinic tangle. Now these wobbles of the magnetic field can change how the fusion fuel moves around in the machine. In many cases, these magnetic perturbations can be harmful for fusion operation. But this study showed that this movement can actually be beneficial sometimes. In fact, these tangles act to spread out the heat coming out of the hot core so that the surrounding material isn't as damaged. What's more, the magnetic wobbles can help the avoidance of something called edge localized modes, which are incredibly harmful events for tokamak plasma operation that could lead to costly repairs for power plant like devices. Now, I really like this article for two reasons. First, it has some excellent figures, along with the figures from the original paper, of these twisted magnetic fields and the particle paths that kind of remind me of the sun, actually. And second, I personally appreciate studies like this because they show that there are a lot of surprises in fusion development, and a lot of them can be happy ones. Four, CNL launches new initiative to fast track fusion energy deployment. For our final story, we're headed to Canada, which celebrated National Fusion Day earlier this month. As part of the event, Canadian Nuclear Laboratories, or CNL, unveiled the Fusion Energy for Canada report, outlining a national strategy for fusion. Now, for those of you who are very plugged into the fusion world, you may remember that Canada is home to a lot of research into tritium, one of the primary fuels used for fusion and a very important substance. Now, CNL also recently announced collaborations with organizations such as Kyoto Fusioneering, the UK Atomic Energy Authority, Stellarex, and General Fusion to work on exactly that tritium and fuel cycle research. Overall, I think it's great to see Canada being so outspoken about fusion research and joining this growing list of countries developing more clear and committed fusion strategies. In fact, CNL Vice President of Science and Technology, Dr. Stephen Bushby, said at the Canada Nuclear Day event, at CNL, we recognize that fusion has tremendous potential to unlock a transformative, clean energy future domestically in order to fight climate change and ensure our national security. Right, well, that's all for our main stories today. But before you click away, we, of course, have some bonuses as well for you. For our first bonus story, we have the fact that Fusion 24, the biggest showcase on fusion energy, was hosted last week at the London Science Museum. Personally, I was lucky enough to actually attend this showcase in person, and I have to say, what a fantastic event. The event was a sort of overview on the past, present, and future of fusion, and had world leaders in science and industry discussing the biggest issues and opportunities in fusion. And for me, in a field that's so monumentally difficult, events like these really energize me about fusion. Our second bonus story comes from our own Fusion Industry Association and covers the announcement that the US Senate has passed the Fusion Energy Act, which codifies a separation in fusion and fission regulation. By regulating fusion this way, the US will hopefully encourage clear, fast, and safer development of fusion energy. Right, well, that's all for this week. I really hope you enjoyed this episode of Fusion News. And if you did, please feel free to leave a like or start a discussion in the comment sections. We always appreciate it. And as always, if you're interested in any of the stories I mentioned today, the resources will be in the video description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.